Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Jo. This week I'm co-hosting music lessons with Carlos. See you! Welcome everybody to another live session in music lesson webinar with Carlos. Today we will cover different topics such as ear training, music theory, keyboard skills, chord progressions and contemporary voicings. We also have some new piano tutorials, so stay tuned and let's get started. Thank you, thank you to Sarah Joe for this great tutorial on Au Privave. And there were a couple transcriptions. Yeah, one was a walking bass line by uh, Ray Brown. Yeah, it was a great transcription. And the other one was a transcription of a guitar solo by Wes Montgomery. Yeah. So I'm gonna leave this video uh, up so you can watch this section because it's actually, uh, yeah, uh, very useful. And now before, now we're gonna start. And let's start with our ear training warm-ups. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna work with triad qualities. Again, we're gonna have two levels of this warm-up. The first level is just feeling only. Yeah, so I'm gonna be playing triads. And let me see if I can and yeah. raise my volume up here. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna be playing uh, triad qualities and just changing keys at random. And you're gonna tell me what type of quality of triad am I playing? Is it major? Is it minor? Maybe it's a diminished triad or an augmented triad. SAS4 or SAS2 or even a major flat five. Yeah. So those are the seven types of triads that we're going to be working. And in this level, we're just going to do uh, just a feeling quality. Yeah. So it is a major, minor, diminished or uh, any of the other, other types. Why don't we start? First triad. Let's hear. What is the quality of this one? This one is minor, E minor, yeah, but I'm not going to even tell you the key center. Yeah, we're not even worried about key centers. It's just the quality. Next one. 
What is the quality of this triad? Major flat five. Okay, welcome to last dawn. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my class. And next uh, triad. What is the triad of this one? See, for now, <laughs> don't look at the keyboard. Otherwise, you're going to figure it out. Yeah, so uh, you can close your eyes and just after you uh, um, perceive, you can open eyes and you can check. Yeah, augment it. Next one. What is the triad quality of this chord? Sus2. Next one. And what is the quality of this triad? Let's hear it again. Diminished. Let's go to another one. What is the triad quality? this one of this chord what is the quality of this triad that's better put major next one let's hear the quality of this triad sus4 we're gonna do one more okay this one might be a bit tricky what is the quality of this triad this is a major flat five okay so how are you going to practice? Hmm. Ideally, uh, you would practice with a partner yeah? and you take uh, turns. So one partner is playing the triads and you are, uh, uh, you know, working on perceiving. Another one is more like, okay, you're by yourself. This is, uh, this practice is actually a bit deeper. You're going to play a triad and you're going to contemplate. It's like a musical meditation. But I'm going to call it contemplation because you're going to direct our attention to a certain object. This object is the sound of this chord. In my opinion, there is no shortcut but to this practice in which we're going to stay with a certain sound and give it all our attention for a few seconds. And what happens is our mind starts to become more open to the subtle feeling tones of all the chords, of all the notes, of all the uh, melodies, yeah? And we're perceiving them clearly, and then the second step is that automatically our mind starts to create a memory, yeah, out of those uh, uh, musical objects, okay? Good, so now we're going to go to the second level. This is more advanced. It's more advanced because I'm going to ask you to visualize at the same time. So you're using your visual abilities and your feeling abilities simultaneously. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to play a triad, but now I'm going to give you the key center. Yeah, so E in this case. And you immediately would um, guess the quality. Oh, this is major. So in your because uh, you're going to be visualizing, so you're going to practice this with your eyes closed. And you're going to see the notes. E. G sharp and B. Okay, and then you can open your eyes and you can check what I'm playing and then you can see if uh, what you guessed is correct or not. So we're gonna start. First try at B. Okay, see if you can see the root, the three and the five of this triad. B minor. So hopefully you've seen the B, D, and F sharp in your mind's eye. Let's move to the next one. D sharp. D sharp. Okay, what is a triad and can you see the root, the three, the five of this triad? And let's go to the next one. A. So now you're in A. What is the quality? After you perceive the quality, you're going to visualize the root, the three, the five of this triad. Now we have an A augmented. Let's go to another key. G flat. Okay, and after you perceive the quality, you're gonna visualize the root, the third or whatever third, and the five. Yeah, in chord scale harmony, we sometimes use the chord tones in a different way, more freely. Yeah, 
So this is a G flat as two, yeah. So our third, yeah, or our middle note of the triad, yeah, can be also a second or a ninth or a fourth or a flat three or a major third, yeah. So we have those choices. Yeah. Okay, let's go to another another chord. Let's go to G sharp. Okay, G sharp. Can you perceive the root? Can you perceive the third? Can you perceive the five? Okay, this is a G sharp minor. Let's go to another chord. Let's go to E flat. So now we're in E flat. Can you perceive the root? Can you perceive the third? Can you visualize and perceive the fifth? And let's do one more. Let's go to A flat. Okay, so what is the quality? That's number one. That's level one. Level two, can you visualize the root? The third, the fifth. Okay, this is an A flat sus four. Okay, so the uh, term third, we're using it in a very a freely, uh, a, in more of a, a way that is gonna cover all the variations. We're using it very freely. So it can be a major third to minor third, perfect fourth or two. Yeah, to uh, cover all the, pos uh, uh, all the possibilities of triad qualities. Okay, good. That was a nice warm up. Now, I wanna be jumping back and forth. I wanna do one more thing as a warm up. I wanna work with our chromatic scales. Chromatic scales are super important. Why are they so important? Because when one scale, we cover the whole movable do system going up and down. How are we gonna practice? Okay, actually we can practice in different levels. The foundational level would be to play our chromatic scale and we're gonna sing at the same time and by the way this whole system is movable do system if you are wanting me to work on fixed do system well bad luck yeah <laughs> i don't i don't work uh, with fixed do i only work with movable do when I was a student at uh, uh, National Conservatory in Lima, yes, I did fix dough and I had to use multiple uh, moving uh, C clefs, yeah, but uh, then later on I shift, yeah, and when I was, uh, uh, <clears throat> I was studying at Berkeley and then I worked at Berkeley's faculty member. Yeah, I realized how powerful the movable dose system is for contemporary music. Yeah, and especially for improvisers, composers, arrangers, you know, uh, all, all type of musicians which are going to be working in uh, a, a contemporary music styles. So there's always going to be some sort of a key center, even if it's a very chromatic key center, still movable that will serve, uh, serve us very well. Okay, so now we're going to play and sing. Ascending, descending. Do, Di, Re, Re, Mi, Fa, Fi, So, Si, La, Li, Ti, Do. Good. Descending. Do. gonna take it to another level this is what we did was just a foundational level now we're gonna go to more advanced more advanced you're only gonna play the root with the left and you are gonna touch the keys but you're gonna not gonna play them but you're gonna sing Do, di, re, re. okay so it's like that so in this case hopefully your sounds are very strong yeah your memories are very clear yeah so you're going to be able to sing each note very precisely okay if you cannot do this then just go back to the foundational level in which you're going to play and sing at the same time so here we go do Excellent. 
excellent, we didn't do a mistake, we're okay. Now we're gonna go descending. Do, ti, te, la, le, sol, se, fa, mi, me, re, ra, do. Okay, that's a great way of practicing in two levels. Okay, so now um, as I was talking about uh, our uh, chromatic scale and movable do system just in one scale, we can cover so many possibilities. So let's say they were in the key of A flat. Yeah? And now what we want is we want to connect our chord scale harmony with our chromatic scale, with our movable do. So let's say we have do. Do can be what the root of A in a dominant seven. D, how about we can have this A diminish or A flat? Now we have Re. What can we do with Re? How about A? Now we're gonna move uh, change mode. How about A9 on uh, A flat minor 7? Okay, now we have a Re. How about the sharp 9? Now we have Mi. Mi can be so many things. How about, I'm going to use the 3, but in an A flat major 7 with a sharp 11. Now we're going to have Fa. Okay, so with Fa, why don't we do A, a flat, uh, sus 4 with 13 and 9. Fa. Now we're going to have Fi. Okay, so Fi can be our sharp 11. So how about we're going to have an A flat 7, 13 and sharp 11. Now we have Sol. Sol can be so many things. Yeah, so many things. So um, what can we do with Sol? Let's, let's change. We're going to do, yeah, let's go back to a sus with 13 and 9 with Sol on top. Sol. And we have C. Okay, C is going to be a sharp 5, not a flat 13, but a sharp 5. So we can have a augmented, augmented 7. We're going to put a 9 below. Uh, interesting sound. Very interesting sound if we put a 9 below. Okay, La. La can be many things. We can have La as a 6. That's a nice sound. We can have Lisa 13th. Yeah. And even we can have La is a diminished 7. Okay, so La can change its functions. Now we're gonna go to uh, Li. How about in, again, I don't know, in F sharp diminished 7 over A flat. Yeah, now we have T. T? T is interesting. We can do so many things with T. We can have T as the 7 in a major 7 chord. Um, T. We can have T as a also major 7, but in a minor major 7 chord. Yeah, so we can have here T. Also the 7 in a diminished major 7 chord. Why not? T. And finally, Do. Do. Okay, so that was just a taste. Yeah, so um, there's some um, jazz pianist, I think, Kenny Werner. He has a very interesting uh, workout, harmonic workout, in which you have maybe one note or three notes. Yeah, and we harmonize them in so many different ways. At the beginning, if that's too difficult, then you can harmonize it on paper. Yeah, so let's say we're going to take a, a four notes. Yeah, why not? Yeah, so E, F, G, A. Yeah, and we can just imagine all the possibilities, yeah, so that we can use. So how about um, E? How about an F uh, major 7? F, how about with a D flat? How about a G with a D flat um, a 7? How about here we have an A? So how about this A with an A flat altered? Yeah, let's do another pass. How about here E? Let's uh, harmonize with a D minor 7 flat 5 with 9. How about B? I'm going to use B with a B, uh, um, 
diminish major 7. And G, how about G? What are we going to do with G? G, how about if we harmonize is a C Aeolian chord? Yeah, and A, we can have A with a G7, but a with a sharp 5. So, endless possibilities, yeah? So, what we need is a system to help us organize all our work, all our daily harmonic work. Okay, oh boy, I talked too much, yeah? And I went, but I think it's good because sometimes students are asking me, Carlos, you are asking me to work with those chromatic scales, but what is the purpose? Okay, it, 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 the purpose is enormous, yeah? It, it's, it's gonna benefit us so much in our melodic work, harmonic work, improvisation work, composition work, you name it. One more thing I wanna do before we start playing. I wanna work with single notes in ear training. Yeah, single notes. And here we have single notes. Okay, maybe I'm gonna use another. Yeah, let's let's use this row first. Okay, so we have Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti. How are we gonna work? We're gonna play a triad, which establishes a certain key center. Let's say I'm gonna start with C. Then we're gonna sing the first one. Do. Then we move. We're going to be changing keys all the time. Why do we change keys? We're changing keys so we are kind of destroying our short-term memory and pushing into long-term memory all the time. This is something that I learned from uh, my teacher, Rand Blake, and God bless him. Yeah, that changed me quite a bit. Okay, so this has two levels of learning. One is of course, on a feeling level, yeah, you are establishing keys and you should be able to hear all the notes. Re, or I'm changing keys. Mi, changing keys. Fa. Okay, so that is on the pure feeling level. On the visual level, yeah, is to be able to visualize in a fraction of a second all the diatonic notes of any scale in any key. Boom, like this. Okay, so you're in, you're in the key of D. And you can see this uh, seven. You're in the key of G. Oh, you can see the fourth. Yeah, or uh, you know, we can take it to another level. We're in D altered. We can see the flat nine. Yeah, so that type of perception, almost real time, is going to help us when we improvise, when we compose, when we're producing. Yeah, so they were flowing, flowing, flowing with all our, uh, not only harmonic system, but with all the ear uh, feeling system. Yeah, so. We're gonna start. Okay, first note, Do, A. Then we're gonna sing Do, Do, and we check. Let's go to another key, G flat. We're gonna sing Re, Re, we check. So that means that you can visualize your major scales in all the different keys. Let's go to another key, B. Mi, check. Go to another key, F. Sing fa, fa check. Let's go to another key, D. We're gonna sing sol, sol and check. Now let's go to another key. How about E flat? We're gonna do la, la and check. And one last key. Let's go to B. We're gonna sing T, T. Okay. So the practice goes like this. You play a chord, you sing the note, whatever diatonic note of the scale, and then you play that note and you check and then you move to another key center. Yeah, and then you're moving, 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 moving. Okay? So that is the practice. That is the practice. Okay, now I wanna do some chords. And let's move on to Okay, I want to start working with seven chords. Okay, very basic, uh, major seven. But again, we're going to be moving through all different keys. Yeah, and here we have our configuration, Do, Mi, Sol, T, or root, three, perfect fifth, major seven. Um, ideally, we are just going to use the formula. And with the formula, we're going to work finding all the chords and all the keys. So key of C. Key of E flat, G flat, A, 
D flat and so on. And the only thing we're going to be looking is at the formula. Why? Because that's going to force us yeah, to be able to visualize and find out all the chords. And then, of course, that doesn't stop there, but then all the seven chords, all the tension substitution chords, all the open voicings in all the different keys, you name it, yeah, in the practice and the, uh, the skill uh, technique yeah uh, is the same yeah we're using always movable though in intervals okay so let's build our major sevens and we're gonna go uh, we're gonna use this cycle cycle of fourths so it's c f b flat e flat a flat d flat g flat b e a d g and c so here we go c do mi so t we're gonna sing. Why don't we sing? Let's go to F. Do, Mi, Sol, Ti. And let's go to B flat. We're going through all the cycle. B flat. Do, Mi, Sol, Ti. E flat. A flat, Do, Mi, Sol, T, D flat, Do, Mi, Sol, T, G flat, through all the cycle now we're gonna th that was more like a foundational level we're just building the triads yeah and left hand is playing uh, the root and then we're playing uh, we're building the triad and we're singing all the notes now we're gonna go to another level we're gonna play the chord yeah we're gonna go through the cycle but I'm gonna change hands and we're gonna change register so this is more difficult this is more for actual players yeah and the same routine we're going to apply to all the triads all the seven chords even tension substitution voicings if they're in close position yeah so we're gonna we're gonna use that so why don't we start c f b flat e flat a flat d flat g flat b E, A, D, G, and C. Okay, how was it? How was it? How was it? Yeah, so today we're, I want to do root and first inversion. Next week we're going to do second and third inversion. Yeah, so, and I want to change my cycles. I want to do... I want to work with this cycle, cycle of major thirds and seven chords. Let's go to first inversion. Yeah, let's go to first inversion. So we're going to play always when I play the root with our left hand, but now we're going to build our chords in first inversion. Mi, Sol, Ti, Do. Yeah, and we're going to build them in all 12 keys and we're going to go through the cycle c e flat f sharp a d flat e g b flat d f a flat b and c okay here we go we're gonna 
sing. We're going to sing them ascending. We could sing descending too, yeah, or with other configuration, but for now, for now, everything ascending. singer but I sing all the time yeah because I want to develop my ears now E flat Mi, sol, ti, do. together then we go to F sharp or G flat Mi, sol, ti, do. together See that I'm singing before I play, yeah, because I want to train my mind to create those sounds and then my hand immediately plays after. A. Mi, so, ti, do. And let's go to D flat. Mi, so, ti. E. Mi, sol, ti, do. G. Mi, sol, ti, do. B flat. D. Mi, sol, ti, do. Now we're going to F. Mi, sol, ti, do. A flat. Mi, sol, ti, do. And B. C. Now that was the foundational level. Now we're going to take it to another level. Now we're going to play the chord in first inversion and we're going to go to the next. But we're going to change hands and we're going to change registers. So we're going to C, E flat, G flat, A, D, and so on. Yeah, but much slower. So here we go. We're going to follow the cycle of minor thirds C, E flat, F sharp, A. D flat, E, G, B flat, D, F, A flat, B, and C. Okay, so the technique is that we're changing hands with each chord that we play and also registers yeah so we're expanding our space keyboard space yeah and also we are going to feel comfortable with that movement okay good good next week second inversion third inversion yeah and what type of chords do we have we have the major seven dominant minor minor seven flat five diminished major six minor six sus four dominant flat five augmented seven minor major seven diminished major seven major seven flat five sharp five and also we have the hybrids we have the major add nine which is 97 chord but we can maybe push it there and the uh, minor add nine Okay, so we have all those chords that we have to cover in root for second and third inversion in all 12 keys. That's a lot of work, but we're going to do it, yeah, because it's really good for us. Okay. Okay, so what am I going to do now? What I want to do now is I want to go to... Chord progression of the day. Yeah, we uh, one of the best ways of studying chord progressions is to study them with some, uh, you know, a fun song. In this case, there is, uh, you know, this uh, great song that I like, which is called, uh, yeah, it's, it's by Bob Marley. Boy, I have I forgotten I forgotten the name of the song. 
Maybe not. Okay, so the name of this song is uh, Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. Yeah, and we're gonna use this song and we're gonna work with here. Let me get my music. Okay, so the chord progression. One, let's see, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna do the chord progression in the key of C. One, five, one, four, one, five, four, one. But now we're gonna play an E flat, okay? So we're in E flat and the formula is we're gonna start in root position. We're gonna go through the whole chord progression using some voice leading. So we're gonna use a smooth movement from chord to chord and I'm gonna end up on the root also. So here we go. We have E flat root, B flat first, E flat root, A flat second, E flat root, B flat first, A flat second, E flat root. Now we're gonna play. We're gonna have play, we're gonna play this chord progression a couple times with backup tracks and here we go. Two, three, and this same chord progression but starting on first inversion actually yes the left hand is going to play the roots of the chord nevertheless the hand is going to play a certain voice leading and that voice leading is going to follow that uh, that formula so here we have E flat first B flat now in second inversion back to E flat first inversion now A flat root E flat first B flat second, A flat root, and E flat first. So now we're gonna play. One, two, three, and. another pass but now we're gonna play in second inversion okay so here we have E flat second inversion B flat root we go back to E flat second now A flat first inversion E flat second B flat root a flat second and a flat first i'm sorry and e flat second inversion okay now we are gonna play together and also i'm writing all the chords as whole notes 
Yeah, so the way we can explore and we can play with our own rhythm, with our own groove, yeah, on our rhythmic patterns. So here we go. One, two, three, and... our pop chord progression of the day you know very useful especially for songwriters or you know or anybody who wants to work on their their basic keyboard harmony what are we gonna do next we have time for one more thing and I want to work with yes I want to work with my piano montunos in this case I want to work with a half step 2-5-1 descending progression, but now in 3-2 clave. We didn't do 3-2 clave. But now we're going to do 3-2 clave. Okay. So here we go. We're going to practice first slowly. Yeah, this is the, the rhythm now is uh, liquefied. And let me get my half step descending chord progression. Okay, I'm all set. And one moment. Okay, good. So let's let's start. We're gonna take it apart. One, two, three, and one. Actually, what we could do also is to play a, a tapping pulse with one hand, yeah? and then playing the montuno. Actually, yeah, you cannot see my lap, but actually we should play a tap pulse in our lap. So since you cannot see my lap, I'm going to tap pulse here. I hope I don't, uh, I don't change any patches on the keyboard. Yeah, so here we go. Tapping pulse quarter notes with the left hand, and then we're going to play the montuno with our right hand. One, two, three and one. That's a great way of practicing also then we can do the other way too okay i don't know if i can do this okay okay so i have to practice also you know this is actually tricky to play pulse and then montuno with other hand it's tricky but it's so good because then we end up with two very strong hands and of course we could add the bass line yeah i i haven't written the bass line here but i'm just gonna play it but I, i'm gonna bring next week i'm gonna write the bass line yeah so we actually can practice playing bass lines So that will be baseline. Now, 
I want to play this pattern. We're going to start slowly, 138 beats per minute, and then I want to push the tempo. Maybe we can go all the way to 172, maybe 180 beats per minute. Yeah. So we're going to work. That's, that's going to be our project now. So let's start 132 beats per minute. And here we go. repeat actually this pattern four times only. I, I repeated uh, eight times. That's that's maybe too much. Okay, and it's not too much for our practice. Yeah, when we're practicing by our on our own, yes, we should probably repeat even more. Yeah, but just f for here, since we're uh, taking it to all different uh, speeds. Now let's go to 148 beats per minute. 148, and we're going to repeat eight times. So here we go. One, two, three. and 56 beats per minute and you know what I felt it it was a bit short yeah so we're gonna repeat eight times eight times sorry for that sorry for changing my mind but I do change my mind all the time in the middle of the classroom every time I'm changing things okay all my students sometimes are complaining about this okay so now we are going to um, <coughs> so and let's let's work now with 156 beats per minute yeah let's talk 156 beats per minute and here we go one Again, you know, I'm covering some basics, yeah, basics, and uh, uh, since uh, most of my students, you know, they are not too familiar with this style, yeah, but actually we can do so many different things, you know, with a progression like this, yeah, so let's say that if I'm not in a, in a 3-2 clave, but let's say when we're in a 2-3 clave, then everything changes. Yeah, and let's see that we want to do more like a jazzy montuno. Yeah, so we can work, uh, we can take even chords with extensions. 
Why not? So we can, we can maybe we can work something like this. We can create some very nice variations. Nevertheless, the rhythm is the same. Yeah, rhythm is the same. Okay, and when we do those uh, jazzy montunos, uh, in my opinion, upper structure triads actually sound great. Yeah, so we can work. Then maybe we can work. We can and do another one. Maybe, maybe, okay, and then maybe we can explore. Yeah, and then we can start exploring, yeah, and opening up our, our harmonic vocabulary, yeah, so, but that's, uh, that's another theme, yeah, so, and, uh, in this class, I want to cover things for uh, for students, okay, who are uh, working with this style. Now, let's push the tempo up to 164 beats per minute. 164. And here we go. One, two. <laughs> Push the tempo. How about let's go to 172 beats per minute. Okay, so the faster we go, the more loose our wrists. Yeah, so we have to work with our technique, getting our, our wrists loose. So maybe we even can do some uh, workouts, you know, some uh, warm-ups. <laughs> can work with those up and down in all the different keys. Okay, so here we go. 172 beats per minute. a nice workout with a 3-2 Montuno, descending to five ones. So we have the, yeah, and actually it would be good to see also the analysis of um, a Montuno like this. Yeah, so this is interesting, yeah, because actually we should try to play this in all 12 keys. Yeah, uh, I know actually just, you know, few pianists who will take the time to play, let's say, a simple Montuno like this, but in all 12 keys. So then we have what? Then we have a, a two, five, when one, two, five, two, five, two, five, resolving to the key center. So then when we go back backwards, we have a one. Then we have a two, five, one, then. 
and that's why we have the bracket. But then we have a substitute dominant, this A flat. So this A flat has a substitute dominant relationship with the G7. So we have E flat, A flat, and then instead of going to the G7, I go to the two first, to the G7, and then to the one. And then we have the last two five, yeah, in the chain. Compulsors always go backwards. Yeah, we have a two five, yeah, in this case, a two secondary dominant of the two of the D minor seven. Okay, so we can have a, a well, we analyze it like this, a two five of the two, but we're gonna put this a two five in the middle. And then we have a D minor seven, resolving it to the one. Okay, so, that analysis is also very, very important. Okay, excellent. So now we, this is the time to say goodbye until, until next week. So thank you for being with me in this live broadcast. We covered a lot of material. We're going to continue to do so in our next class. I'll see you next week. Same time, same channel. Until then, have a wonderful week, practice your instrument every day, and listen, and play lots of good music. See you next week.